Hello and welcome back to Stephen Plays Earthbound. My name is Stephen George, I play video games, and today it's Earthbound. When we last left off, this was the status. Ness is level 35, nearly to 300 hit points and 100 psychic points. He's definitely a powerhouse. You can see uh, he's nearly hit 200,000 experience. Paula's right behind him at level 30. Uh, got plenty of psychic points, does uh, a lot of a lot of good psychic offensive damage. And Jeff is a little above Paula at level 33. So, when we last left off, we were down here in uh, this underground cave. We had to come back to Threed from Foreside, and we talked to these wonderful people who had repaired the Skyrunner for us. I want you to stay, but if you can't, so long. Thanks for every little wolf thing. We painted over all the damage parts of the Skyrunner. Now I wonder how you start this thing up. Turns out Jeff knows. Ah, here's the problem, and it's not too tough to fix. Hang on for a second or two. There! That should do it. Now if we board, the Skyrunner will take us back to Winters. With Dr. Andonut's help, I can modify the machine to fly to the Summers. If Dad, I mean Dr. Andonuts, is not available, I'll have to figure it out by myself. Anyway, let's get back to the lab in Winters. That's it. Go, machine, go! And now we start playing The Who once again. Now we're making a very small stop in Winters. We're actually uh, going to Winters specifically to have the device modified to go to Summers, which is a, a new town which we cannot walk to. Uh, only Onnit, Tucson, uh, Three, Dusty Dunes Desert, and Foresight are connected in the map. Everything else is elsewhere or connected to each other, but not connected to Foresight, for example. Um, so it's interesting to note that the Skyrunner is not something that can be controlled. It's not that, you know, Jeff is piloting it from within, uh, inside the Skyrunner. Um, it's literally a device that is pre-programmed to go to a certain place, kind of like uh, using teleportation. It can only—it's not that it can only go where it's been, but it can only go to a certain location. So it's not—he's not controlling it. So as soon as we get back to Winters, we have to deal with something very important called the fourth sanctuary location, and then we will be on our way to Summers. Now, if you remember, there are only eight your sanctuary locations, which means that once we get this fourth one, we will roughly be done with about half of Earthbound. Which is kind of sad, because I really like this game to go on forever, but all good things must come to an end. Kikuki Kiku! Thanks for taking care of my husband the other day. Oh yes, we finally tied the knot. Kookie Kikiki! Honey, don't just stand there with your mouth open, say hello. Kriko, kaka! So. Kiklu, kika! You pass by a cave north of Stonehenge. Don't you ever wonder what's inside? Kikyo, kukuki! Can't seem to stop thinking about it. Kiki, kiki! Go and see what's there. Kuku, kaku, kuku! We're going to get out of here. We're still newlyweds, you know. Bye bye! And there to go. Alright, Dr. Indonuts. Oh, you surprised me. You're Ness, aren't you? Jeff wets his bed sometimes. But other than that, he's a good boy. Take care of yourself and Jeff. The Bubble Monkey said there's a cave north of Stonehenge. I've known about it for a long time. The locals call the area Rainy Circle, but I haven't been there. I wonder what's inside the cave. I, uh, I, I understand. While you're checking out that place, um, I'll work on remodeling the Skyrunner. Oh yes, yes, my co-worker Bigfoot dislikes violence. He's such a nice guy, and he loves people. He often shares his beef jerky with me. Bigfoot won't share his beef jerky with us, but he will sell it to us for, like, $70 or something. Ah, oh, I got it right. $70. Um, none of this is really all that useful to us. Uh, this machine is useful. It's pretty much like staying the night in the hotel. It instantly refills all your health. Uh, but we are going to be going to deal with the fourth sanctuary location. So, let's take a look at our inventory here. Hmm. I think we're doing alright. We still have plenty of big bottle rockets. 
Let's do it. Heading up from the lab. Now, Bigfoot dislikes violence, but the uh, but the other cave boys are all for it, so we might have to run into one of them. Actually, no, I don't see a soul. Eh, whatever. Onwards we go. And that was easy. You probably recall when we were here earlier. Only Ness can grasp the power of the spots. Now Ness is here, so let's take care of business. You finally got here. This is the fourth Your Sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me if you dare. And dare we do. Shroom attacked. Now, this boss is one of my least favorites just for the fact that, since he's a giant mushroom, yes, you guessed it, he mushroomizes us early, as fast as he can. Um, however, it's interesting that Ness has an ability, and I've I talked about this uh, previously. He has Flash, and if you know Flash Beta at this point in the game, Flash Beta is actually capable of killing Shroom in one hit, just wiping him out. But I don't have Flash Beta, so we're doing it the old-fashioned way. And the old-fashioned way is going to be using Fire and Big Bottle Rockets. Big Bottle Rockets, in general, just really do a lot of, <laughs> a lot of damage. 500. But Ness is strange, but Ness is the one that's going to do the least amount of damage in this fight, so... Who cares? He can defend. And uh, if Jeff gets another big bottle rocket launched off, the fight should mostly be over. Oh, 94, that's cute. When you're taking like 500 from Jeff's bottle rockets. Once again, gonna have Ness defend. Call it can use fire again. Uh, and we got one bottle rocket left, and that'll probably finish off Shroom. Yep. Easy peasy. Once again, people will say that bottle rockets make the game too easy. They're kind of correct, but they're part of the game. Ness's level is now 36. Oh, baby. Offense went up by 3. Speed went up by 1. Oh, baby. Guts went up by 3. IQ went up by 1. Oh, baby. Luck went up by 3. Max HP went up by 2. People went up by 5. Ness's level is now 37. Double level. That's awesome. Vitality went up by 1. Max HP went up by 13. People went up by 2. Paul's level is now 31, offense went up by 2, defense went up by 1, speed went up by 1, guts went up by 1, vitality went up by 1, luck went up by 1, maximum HP went up by 2, people went up by 1. Paula learned PSI Freeze. That's the third level of Freeze. That does a ton of damage. It is a, uh, a disaster of an attack, except disaster for the enemy. Anyway, <laughs> she's also double, level double leveling. Uh, Paul's level is now 32. Offense went up by 2. Speed went up by 1. IQ went up by 2. HP went up by 1. That rocks. People went up by 9. Jeff's level is 34, and I suspect, following suit, he will also double level. Level 34. Offense went up by 2. Speed went up by 1. HP went up by 1. Oh, he single leveled. And I've got this cool mushroom. Rainy Circle. Ness caught a whiff of steak, but just for a second. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of the rainy circle. And with that, we are roughly halfway through Earthbound. It's been a fun ride. And it's going to be another half-fun ride. The enemies are generally scared of us, so we should be able to just walk away from them. There we go. Uh, we're going to use this opportunity to get something done so we don't have to deal with it later. And I like preventing <laughs> preventing myself from having to do things later. It's like reverse procrastination. There's probably a word for that, but I don't know what it is. What we're going to do, as long as we don't run into any of these baddies, or they run into us, uh, there is... See if we're gonna be safe. Yeah. There is a pencil that we can erase. We can use the pencil eraser here. Now, the reason we want to do this now, because you don't have to do it now, that is the last iron pencil in the game. So from this point forward, we can actually go ahead and get Escargo Express to take that off our hands and free up a item slot. 
So in my opinion, it's a pretty good idea to do. Um, you know, it's it's not required, but I think it's a pretty good idea. Now we have to fight these guys. Uh, but we're going to see the instant revitalization machine, so we'll just let them have it. Oh, you guys get to see what uh, Freeze Gamma will do. Arachnid. Fun times. 511. It's like a stinking big bottle rocket. Now the downside is it's only going to hit one target. But then again, I guess the bottle rockets only hit one target. There are uh, there are attacks that you get later in the game that do that kind of damage to all of the enemies. Um, they cost ridiculous amounts. Uh, Pooh has one called Starstorm. does a ton of damage. And uh, Ness's ultimate, Rockin' Omega, also does a lot of damage. Hello, it's your dad. You've been out there for a long time now. Maybe none of my business, but don't you think it would be a good idea if you took a break? No, dad. Dad loves calling and reminding me that I'm spending too long playing Super Nintendo. And the crocodiles weren't here before either. Uh, because whenever the last time we came through here was uh, with only Jeff. And uh, Jeff did not have to fight any crocodiles. So the crocodiles are in here now. Uh, but the crocodiles are scared of us because we're so powerful. And uh, we could refill our PP by going to the uh, the shiny spot, but it's going to take much longer than just going back to the lab. Uh, cave boys and bears. I would rather not if I didn't have to. Oh wow, they're everywhere. You see this? It's like a like a convention. For wow, we're gonna have to fight a few of these guys. All right, bear. Lucky bear seven. Mighty bear seven. I think we'll be alright if we just bash this guy to death. He's got a pretty good amount of HP. I got a pretty good amount of attack power. Take that, bear. If that is your real name. Running past the cave boys. Alrighty. Back to the lab. I gotta admit, that was it's a this is a pretty easy stop. I mean, if you've got some bottle rockets, Shroom, or really any other enemy in the game, is just a piece of cake. There we go, took care of that. Oh, Ness! Jeff, what's his bed? Okay, you said this. Oh, there we go. Hmm, looks like you found something out. I finished remodeling the Skyrunner. You can leave for summers whenever you wish. It shouldn't break this time. Well, maybe. Here we go. off. And this time we are not <laughs> going to Threed. We've already been there. And uh, once once we travel out of uh, Winters, I mean, well, being in Winters period, uh, the only way to get back to any of the other places before is to teleport. Because there's just, there's no other way to go. Coming down over the Marina of Summers. I love Summers. Summers kind of reminds me of my home in Myrtle Beach. I'm from a beach town, if you didn't know that. There's probably a lot of things you could learn about me. If you are interested in, and I don't want to plug myself, but if you're interested in me um, further than just the Let's Plays, you might want to uh, consider looking at my vlog, because uh, that covers a lot, of, a lot of stuff about myself and my personal life. And it's gone. It exploded. But we're in Summers, we made it. The guy next to me is really bugging me. He keeps following me around. Wake up in the morning, fall in love. Eat lunch, fall in love. And at night, fall in love again. That's my dream life. Well, even this town isn't safe. There's taxis and crazy muscle men and all kinds of bad things. I'm actually a surfer, but you can't surf at this beach. Should I become a porter so that I can get tips from all the old folks? Hey, hey, stop putting your grimy fingerprints all over my car, you little punk. Everything in uh, Summers is very expensive. But what we want is Club Stoic. This is not the Club Stoic, or the Stoic Club. Please be on your way. But it says that on the door. Hmm. 
If you're bored, go check out the Scaraba Cultural Museum. It may be helpful to you. They have a hieroglyph from a pyramid. Hmm, what else is in this town? This town is easy to travel just because it's one road. Also, I don't think I ever pointed this guy out. Which is a shame because it's, what, episode 21 and I've never done that? This is the hint guy. Now wait a minute, youngster. I could give you a great hint for just $150. You'd like a hint, wouldn't you? Uh, no. So you're telling me that you don't want a hint? You're either awfully confident or $150 is too much to pay. Anyway, a young man like you is very unusual these days. If you happen to need a hint, come on back. I'm here all the time. There's a hint guy in every single town, and the amount of money that you have to pay uh, changes based on the town. The, the hint he gives you is always the same, depending on where you're at in the game. So, for example, at the beginning of the game, if, you, if you're lost, you come to the hint man. At the beginning, he's like $35. You pay $35, bucks, and he tells you that you need to go talk to Frank. So if you didn't know you needed to do that, then you do that. Uh, so the hints continually change. So there's like a database of lists, depending on where you are in the game, it'll help you along in the game in case you get stuck. Um, the key here is that if you want to save money, to teleport back to Onnit and ask the hintman there, because he always costs $35 in Onnit. Fun fact. There's the hospital, which looks really grimy and run down. More people to talk to. East of here is the port town of Toto. No, no, I'm not a billboard. <laughs> go to Scaraba, you need to cross the sea. However, a monster named Kraken lives in the open sea. He attacks ships that pass through. Are you scared? Huh, meow. Pss, pss. This is the guy we want. Would you like a boat ride? Not at the moment. Okay, I understand. I don't feel like sending a ship out. I'm worried about my wife. I'm not afraid of the Kraken. My wife's totally ignoring her magic cake business. These days, she spends her time hanging out in a strange club. We no longer have any mutual interest to discuss. Is our relationship over? Uh, we're going to head up here to this house. I don't want to go out to sea because of the Kraken. I mean, any normal person would feel the same way. Not that house. <laughs> Let's go to this house. Meow. Not that house. Which house is it? Nah, it's not this guy. We're looking for the Jamaican guy. Anyway, we'll talk to this person. If you come closer, I'll play the trumpet. Uh, I don't know how to play yet. <laughs> Earthbound humor at its finest. In one of these houses is someone we need to talk to. There's no one in here. I thought it was that one up there, but I guess not. Here it is. Do you know the Stoic Club in Summers? You need to call a secret number for a reservation if you want to get in. What? Yeah, I'll give you the secret number. I warn you, though, it's a strange place. So now we have the number that we can call the Stoic Club. Hello, Jeff. Oh, happy day. I finally get a hold of you. Oh, Jeff. Hi, it's me, Tony. I'm collecting players' names for a school project. You know, players, just like you. That's right, you, the one holding the controller. Would you register your name, please? Don't spell your name wrong. All right, um, in this section, we enter our name into the game, and uh, it's kept for purposes uh, related to the end of the game. But I'm gonna keep it a secret from you guys if you don't mind, so I am going to cut to when I'm finished putting the name in. I apologize for any trouble this may have caused you. Don't put my friend Jeff in any dangerous situations, okay? I worry about him. I really do. Well, talk to you later, Jeff. I hope that I can see you again when you are feeling up to it. From T-O-N-Y. You got that? Well, I've been on the phone too long. Gotta go. Good luck. Take care. So long. This time I'm really gonna hang up. Goodbye. Beep. It was revealed by the creator of Earthbound, the writer, uh, Shikisato Itui, um, that Tony, who is Jeff's old roommate from the boarding school who just called, is gay. And he apparently has a thing for Jeff. Or maybe he's just really good friends. Although Itui did say that he was gay. Anyway, that's actually fairly irrelevant. Uh, let's see here. Shop. Why are we going into a shop? Because they have a phone. And we have a dollar. <laughs> 
I just picked up the receiver. Stoic Club. Hello, this is the Stoic Club. Oh, yes, sir. Would you like to make a reservation? I think it's fun how they, like, act like they know who I am, even though this is the first time I've called. Certainly. We are looking forward to having you here. Thank you. Alright, so now we have reservations for the Stoic Club. So let's go to the Stoic Club. Walking along the strip. Well, actually, actually like walking in the middle of the road. But, you know, it's the same thing. It's romantic or something. Sort of. Probably. Oh! Oh, man. Stinking taxi ruining my day. Mad taxi and cohort. Exhaust fumes attacking me. Stupid sign. <sighs> Let's tear this stuff apart. Ohio. Mm, no. I don't like Ohio. Now all the people from o <laughs> that are from Ohio that are watching are like, Why don't you like Ohio? Man, they're gonna kill Paula. Take that sign. Ha. Huh. Stupid sign. Hmm. Paula, you'll probably be fine. Let's try freeze and see if that does anything. To a car. Yeah, take that. Now, with all of that out of the way... We can finally go into the Stoic Club next time. <laughs> I got you guys. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video in any capacity whatsoever, please like it. And if you haven't already done so, highly consider subscribing to this channel. Um, I release videos every single day. There is a new video released every day at noon, Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy more. And you want to keep up with the rest of Earthbound, right? So do that. Thank you so much for watching. And join me next time on Stephen Plays.